Welcome to our spoiler discussion of Thor Ragnarok, where now we're going to be talking more in depth about the new film and basically some things that we didn't leave, that we left out from our uh, non-spoiler view. So pretty much to get into the story, we uh, we have pretty much you know the story goes with Thor having to fight up fighting this weird fire demon that's called uh, well we forgot the name of it but yeah, sulfur basically or or yeah, some, some sulfur thing. or whatever his name yeah. is basically his. Uh, this demon is like kind of reminds me of something out of like Lord of the Rings or something, yeah. you know. And he basically the the key part about this is that this demon has this this uh, this fire demon or whatever he is. He has like this uh, this crown that he wears that's supposed to be a, that's supposed to play a pivotal role later in the film. So this fire thing, his main goal is to destroy the Thor's land. I yeah. keep forgetting the name of the Asgard. World. Asgard. He wants to destroy it or in something like. The, the thing's called Ragnarok. Yeah. What he wants to it's do. It's basically a prophecy to, yeah. I guess, to diminish all, all life, pretty much. Yeah. And their goal is to... Base, or it's it's Thor's goal to pretty much stop Ragnarok from happening. Yeah. While and then when he returns to Asgard, he discovers that Loki has pretty much taken over uh, Asgard from returning from the dead from the last film. Yeah. And well, he was presumed dead, but he came back. And we let this out in our sp our non spoiler, but pretty much. Loki has put uh, Odin inside this kind of weird limbo type of place that he's been yeah, kept for a while. It was like, uh, kind of like resembles the Star Wars thing. Star Wars Force Awakens, yeah, Force Awakens. where Lucas pretty much was at. Yeah, kind of put him in there, and Thor pretty much says, "Where's he at? You know, father. Where's father at? Take him, me to him, and stuff." Yeah, and that's where you do you end up running into Doctor Strange. Yeah, on a, on the journey to finding their father so yeah because dr strange has like a really funny part where he has loki going through like this well he has loki going through like this weird hold throughout the yeah, entire the time. time he's like i've been falling for 35 minutes <laughs> yeah and then he's talking to chris hemsworth about because he dr strange's got that power to i can locate your father in seconds yeah stuff. at the meantime we get kind of like a funny comedy where he's like you want tea and then he's like no i don't like tea and stuff and start just keep filling up his beer like that. yeah yeah and, yeah and he keeps messing with them and stuff, so that was pretty cool. It was a good cameo for Doctor Strange. Yeah, and then we also basically get, he Doctor Strange uh, makes him go to where Odin's at, and when he gets there, he discovers that Odin is pretty much you know has been isolated for such a while, mm -hmm. and basically this is kind of where I get to a minor con. Odin has been there for a while, right? And mm -hmm. he, but he sees both his sons there. Yeah. All of a sudden, Odin pretty much just evaporates out of nowhere yeah he's pretty much say i'm at in life now and um there's a prophecy i i did years ago that you guys do not know about which is another con because there were some people that that ain't part of the throne that knew about this but thor and, and loki didn't know about was they had a sister yeah and their sister was you get this history where she was the god of death and she was like just so brutal and then you hear Odin was like really bad at one point, but then he he wanted to be good, but he couldn't control his daughter, so he put her in prison. Yeah, he banished her. Uh, unfortunately, she gets free when he dies. That's the only thing bad thing about the prophecy. Yeah. So yeah. basically, this prophecy says that if Odin dies, she comes back, and that that's yeah. Helena played by Clay Blanchett. Yeah. And so. I get where the film was going with that to try to you know bring us into this plot line, but I did feel like they they gave it kind of a weak death for Odin because yeah. I felt like they could have done like they did in the last film because I, I felt like when they killed the mother off in the second yeah, film know, right? that it was actually at odds because there was actual you know yeah. bad shit was happening. Yeah, I didn't really get the emotion that I should have gotten when he passed. Yeah, I'm like. I should have had a better emotion on that. Yeah, that's one thing I did at least give credit for Thor Dark World was that you yeah. did kind of feel the emotion with the mother in that one. Yeah. This one, it was just kind of like he just vanishes, and yeah. throughout the rest of the film, he, Thor sees visions of him basically uh, giving him motivation to become the God of Thunder. And then whenever we get to meet the sister for the first time, she is so powerful, he throws his uh, hammer, and then she shred like breaks it in pieces 
and it's no more. Yeah. And then she ships him off, like hits him to this another world where he goes, ends up going to. Yeah, both him and Loki. And that's yeah. basically like you see in the trailers where a ma pretty much majority of the time, Thor has no hammer. He, like he's basically having to use his own strength. Well, he hadn't, yeah, he hadn't discovered it yet, but yeah, he's now at this point, he's vulnerable. Basically, like anybody yeah. could slap him around. That's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. And the, so when he gets to this planet, uh, it's like, it, that planet kind of reminded me of the place like, uh, like a cross between that one place off of Blade Runner 2049, the kind of junkyard place. Yeah, and, and, a, did, and a little yeah. bit of like a, like a neo noir Tokyo or something. Like that with a neo noir uh, fifth element feel. Yeah. It's all like junky and colorful with the cities kind of like looking like that. Yeah, you're all right. It actually yeah. looks pretty cool though, but yeah. when they get there, that's when we get introduced to Jeff Goldblum's character who's called yeah. the Grand Master. And for those of you who are being in the comics, he's actually the brother of, uh, if you remember the collector from the Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. first one, he's actually the brother of that character yeah. the who Benicio Del Toro Which played. we will be seeing Jeff Goldblum in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Set for 2020, 2019, yeah. somewhere around there. But yeah, he'll be in that one. But yeah, this like in this world, they pretty much take Thor captive. They take pretty much anybody captive, and they're forced to fight. Yeah, and then yeah. like you see in the trailers, it pretty much shows that Thor has to go battle to battle with Hulk, who has been on a two-year disappearance since the events of Age of Ultron. Yeah, and this, and we also discover that uh, basically he's brainwashed because he. He is still, you know, because once he's Hulk, he, he, he gives no fuck. He wants to yeah, fight everybody. Well, we kind of, we also, yeah, they kind of like uh, hinted us that that rough, like, Mark Ruffalo. Tanner, what's, what's Bruce his name? Banner. Bruce Banner. Bruce uh, Banner has to get to back to where he is eventually because he's finding out that he's turning into Hulk permanently. Yeah, there yeah. there is no cure, basically. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, you got that going on, but then yeah, he's forced to fight. But then we get to a lot. This is where we get jo Jeff Goldblum, fucking hilarious. He is great. Like oh my he, god. Like we said in the other one, he's you know dancing around. He's yeah. energetic, you know, and he is like one of the biggest highlights as far as the comedy. And he's also pretty. He's a side villain because he's also bad in this. He can like you know melt you with his little little staff yeah, thing, staff yeah. Thing, and then yeah, he makes jokes about it. Like, Ooh, that stinks. It's getting all over me. Yeah, yeah he's, he's he's like hilarious. He's like he interrupted me. I yeah. didn't want to melt him. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And then while you got that going on, we start seeing Kate Blanchett's uh, the sister really tearing and taking over and killing everybody. Yeah, and you also she could just go like stand there. She reminded me of Yondu. The girl version with the sword. Yeah. Uh, like a girl version, but don't have the little the thing. The whistle know, thing. Whistle thing. This one, it's all nice. She's got like a thousand knives popping up. She killed pretty much the entire Thor's army in like fucking two seconds. Yeah, he killed almost all of Asgard's forces oh my so God. fast. And just in like fact, a blink of the eye. Hell, she's almost the equivalent of, well, not quite as much as Thanos, but if Thanos has this type of power, I couldn't imagine uh, what Thanos the fuck is, he is going to no, be like. <laughs> uh, yeah, this girl, I'm going to tell you right now, this movie up the anthem to to final proportions if this was to end the Thor trilogy. Yeah. I mean, talk about Man, her powers is unreal. It's crazy how fucking crazy, you know. Yeah, her powers are. But and then you also have like the stuff going on where she also recruits one of the guys, uh, one of the Asgardians, who's played by Carl Urban. And uh, Carl Urban, I've always liked as an actor, and it's very different to see him in this type of role because I guess because he's been so many like action blockbuster films because yeah. I usually play him I usually see him kind of play more of a hero type bill yeah guy. but he does a lot of these space movies man he's in Star Trek Doom Doom <laughs> I mean he's into these sci-fi movies yeah so it's, tell. it's always a yeah. blast to see him and uh, and you know he, he plays the typical soldier who is on the good side but then he has no po choice but to become bad yeah but he, you can tell he's like want to do this but she's gonna kill me <laughs> yeah yeah and so and then the rest of the film deals with thor having to recruit hulk and that other girl we mentioned in the other video uh i forgot her name but the the girl that's that's part of the uh valkyries, the valkyries. yeah yeah who, who in, in the history it showed that she tried to fight kate blanchett's character and she her her all forces got defeated yeah and, and they, uh, they presumed her dead yeah so, yeah and and so as the and we also get introduced to that other one we forgot to mention that rock kind of guy. I thought that guy was was pretty yeah, too. Yeah, and this movie it's a I'm it's a it's a different told take on Thor. 
they're doing more of a Guardians of the Galaxy feel to this one, where he has like a big guy, rock guy, yeah. and he's meeting other alien for you know alien people that live in the same universe as Guardian Galaxy. The guy kind of looked yeah. like Thing from Fantastic Four, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit of that too. Yeah, and then that dude had a funny guy with swords, like nine yeah. strands, a robot dude. But, but and then they, yeah. they later, and then when they get together to try to go after, go to Asgard and everything, they call themselves the Revengers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Revengers. Yeah, instead of like yeah. 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 That was pretty cool. But anyways, we get into the deep in the story now that Thor ends up having to break out of this of this this prison thing and he takes um Banner. Hulk and, and and then the girl yeah. with them and stuff and then Loki. Well, Loki tries to pull his typical I'm going to fuck with you. I'm going to backstab. There's you. this running joke they do that was pretty funny yeah. where Thor throughout the entire film has like this electro thing that 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 the girl was yeah. shocking him with. Yeah. He yet later does that on Loki when he's trying <laughs> yeah. to escape. Yeah, cuz Loki <laughs> tries to team up a little bit with Jeff uh, Jeff Goldblum just for a little split second for a bounty and then that's when he put that thing on him yeah. and then shocked his ass and then they pretty much yeah they gotta get back to the wor their world uh, take down the sister yeah yeah, and then basically when they get there all hell is pretty much breaking loose because we also yeah. discover if we didn't bring this up in the other one because yeah. I wanted to kind of keep it on this Idris Elba's character from yeah. the other two films, he yeah. also comes back and he's leading a basically an underground resistance going to yeah. basically fight uh, the Helena and her and her forces. Yeah, and I actually found this really interesting because uh, it basically feels like an all-out war is taking place. Yeah, and I'm telling you right now, boy, it takes everybody and then some to take her down. Yeah, she is just fucking beyond strong. And then yeah, you get this epic fucking battle. Just everybody's getting torn up, and then we finally get to see the powers that, that Thor, Thor can, can get. Yeah. After, there's a part where she basically injures his eye. She, and, yeah, she burned his eye out, like took his eye out. Like Odin, yeah. 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 And basically that's when we see that that glimpse that comes back with Odin where he motivates uh, Thor to become who he is by saying, you were, you never, were never part of, it was never the hammer, hammer. it was yeah. the actual god of thunder. Yeah. So that's when he becomes pretty much like full on raiding. Raiding, oh combat. god. And even that, he realized we, you think okay, he's on defeat or like typical superhero film. I'm glad they didn't do that because they do that and it just ends up being too stereotypical. Yeah. So this one, even his powers, he realizes, oh, I can't defeat her. So they have to do something that they didn't want to do. A and Deus Ex Machina by basically bringing back the demon from the first part of the film. And have proven him to destroy their world. Yeah. Uh, decided to go ahead and evacuate everybody and then the world as they know it dies. Yes. Yeah. And so And then that thing kills uh Kate Blanjack, so Yeah. And then basically we also see that uh you know that pretty much shows that Thor finally discovers who he really is with the God of Thunder, yeah. which I actually enjoyed. And pretty much they're looking for another world. It's kind of like, you kind of feel like this is going to really lead into Gardens of Galaxy now. Either because that or the next space. Uh, either that or, or probably Infinity War because yeah. to basically go into the mid -cre the credit sequences, now we didn't watch the, the last one, but the one yeah. in the mid credits, there's mid credits that pops up where, well, before we get to it, we also see that Loki is finally choosing sides with Thor. Yeah, this one you think, okay, he's going to backstab him or he's not going to be, because Loki has that power where he doesn't really want to be there. Yeah. And then that's when he tests him and then you at Loki's actually there. And you yeah, get, and I, 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 I was actually good with yeah. that, that, that. I actually story. like that. Now, because I'm getting kind of burnt out seeing him playing that same backstab. It yeah. kind of gets old. It gets repetitive. I'm glad that now he's like, you know what, I'm, I'm ready, you know. I'm ready to change. Yeah. So that's a pretty good closure. But like you said, the post credit scene, we get this big spaceship. I don't know if it's Thanos' a spaceship, whatever it whatever is. Whatever it is. But, but but we also see now that... Oh, we did, forgot we to talk about Stan Lee's little yeah. cameo. Stan Lee also has a cameo in the film oh, where God, he, he when, when he's the guy who gives him a haircut. He's like, yeah, oh, my haircut. hands aren't like yeah. they used to be. <laughs> and he comes out with all these knives. He's like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was pretty funny. So And what we also forgot to mention was... When Bruce Banner and, and Hulk and team or and uh, Thor and team get back to Asgard, this is now officially we get the idea that uh, Bruce Banner is now officially going to be Hulk for the rest of his life because yeah. he finally turns into Hulk again and he fights that really big like mon like uh, dog kind of creature. Yeah, the um, the Kate Blanchett apparently had this dog back in the day. It's like this fucking thirty. To 100 foot dog that nobody can't beat and it's got powers of its own and it's 
huge. So Bruce Banner was the only one that could do handle yeah. you know, him and stuff and fight him. And he even was getting beat up. Yeah, because yeah. well, then when he tried to go after the fire uh, demon, he was basically getting his ass kicked. Like, but big monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This movie has like decided to get set because they've been noticing how theirs just felt like standard, and they have because I haven't been big fan of the past Thors, but they weren't terrible. They just weren't my taste. But they weren't horrible films. They decided to go ahead and change it up. Yeah. Change everything. Let's do something totally different. Which I really yeah. enjoyed. And they did the whole 80s retro, Gardens of the Galaxy uh, they even comedy. Bring in, and they even yeah. bring in uh, communi- or Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin yeah. twice in the yeah. film. Which I With thought the was soundtrack. a great yeah. theme song for it. So this one really... I'm gonna tell you right now, it was a good change. I'm yes, glad. definitely. Yeah. And there was now we didn't see this last uh, credit scene that took place in <clears throat> uh, the film because we left after the mid credits. Yeah. Um, apparently, we also found out there's a a, a post credit scene where. I guess it cuts back to where the planet was where Jeff Goldblum's character was yeah. and the the revolution still happening where I, I'm only guessing that there's forces that are trying to come after his guys or something. Yeah. We just read about it on Wikipedia, so for those of you who have seen it, uh, check it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I can say this is probably one of the this is probably my second favorite uh Marvel MCU film of this year after yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna say this, and this could possibly make my top ten list. I will say that I'm I'm proud of where they, you know, they kind of like set went something different because I mean for what it was and the other two they was kind of standard. Yeah, they uh, were. Yeah. But with this one, I'm glad that they really took a different approach. And with that, mm-hmm. I'm going to give Thor Ragnarok a nine out of ten. Yeah, I'm gonna same as him. I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. Uh, if you want to see kind of where we broke down our pros and cons. Uh, you watch our spoiler free one. Yeah. Yeah. Now the thing I did want to talk about on the cons department, I couldn't talk in that one on the previous one. The spoil was what we went in through with Odin earlier. Yeah. That's what it was. I was wanting to talk about where yeah, his death was really We could have seen a lot more honorable death like we saw with yeah. uh, the, the mother in the second one. We kinda went over that earlier yeah, where earlier, I felt yeah. like we could have gave a more proper death. Yeah. You know? So that was the con I was I, I told everybody to tune into to listen. That one, so yeah, that was my <laughs> that was my con, so yeah, and plus, <coughs> yeah, but, but overall, though, I still highly enjoy the movie, and mm-hmm. I I really feel like the I am even more excited now what they're gonna do with Infinity Wars, yeah, same here. So. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm still looking forward also to Black Panther next, but I'm more excited for Infinity War. I feel like Black Panther, I'm going to see, and I'm sure it's going to be fun, or, or I'm gonna, it's gonna be interesting. I just feel like that's gonna be another character i don't care about but we'll see yeah yeah but anyway mm-hmm. though for those of you who have also seen thor ragnarok and the other marvel films as well and, and read the comics so uh, definitely comment below on what you guys thought about it and if you like what you see here you can feel free to like and subscribe and also check out some other reviews on our channel and check out our website at filmfreaks.com and we'll be seeing you in our next review we'll see you later later